Thank you all for being here this morning. I want to thank, uh, I'm Michael Bennett from Colorado. I want to thank ARP for their leadership. I want to thank my colleagues, Shelley Moore Capito from West Virginia for her partnership on this bill and to our, our the House members that are here, Congressman Sanchez, Congresswoman Sanchez, Congressman uh, Kerry for their bipartisan leadership of this bill as well. It's really, really important that this is a bipartisan bill, that it's a bicameral bill. And the reason for that is that there are 48 million Americans that are serving as caregivers for a loved one in this country of 330 million people. Today, there are 600,000 Coloradans, like Linda, who's behind <laughs> me today, literally behind me, you don't need to be. Uh, he was with us today from Denver, spending a total of 560 million hours per year administering care in, our, in this country. This adds up to over $11 billion in unpaid care every single year just in Colorado alone. Many Americans, including adults and children with disabilities, rely solely on family caregivers. In fact, that's often all, all there is just to get through their day. Family caregivers are the backbone of our care system and make, and make it possible for millions of Americans to receive support and services at home rather than in a nursing home or in a long-term care facility. This is an issue that affects all communities across the country. And as Americans get older, their need for family care will increase and most of us will likely act as a family caregiver at some point in our lives uh, or have already acted as a family caregiver, or will need care ourselves at some point in our lifetimes. The millions of unpaid caregivers in this country deserve recognition for their contributions. This credit would help ease the financial burden for millions of unseen and unheard caregivers. And Congress can make things a little bit easier for them by passing this bipartisan bill. As I said at the outset, Caregiving is not a partisan issue. It's an issue that affects all of our communities, and I'm so glad to, to, to partner with my colleagues from both sides of the aisle and both, si both chambers on this really important bill. And with that, I'll turn it over to Senator Capito. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you uh, Senator Bennett, Michael, uh, for being my partner here, and I know you've haunted this for several years, and we're always looking for a success. It's great to be here with Congresswoman Sanchez and Congressman uh, Kerry from my neighboring state of Ohio. But where it's really uh, an honor for me to be is with the caregivers that ha are living this and have lived this. And I want to make an especial welcome to Monty Brown, who's from my hometown of Charleston, West Virginia. And uh, the church that he pastored was where I was married 40, 47 years ago, but he wasn't there then. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think Michael did a great job of describing the depth and breadth of the issue in terms of numbers, costs, and the burdens on families. So often you hear families quit their job to move to be close to mom and dad as they're aging, or you hear uh, that... Uh, they have to rely on uh, resources that they, A, don't have, or B, uh, have difficulty cobbling together in the family. A lot, of passion, a lot of people are passionate about issues here on Capitol Hill because of their own personal experience. And if you'll allow me just one minute to say, my personal experience really drives my passion for this. Both my parents aged at the same time with Alzheimer's. I have a brother and a sister. None of us were living there. But the caregiving burden really falls to the children as it should, and I hope it does in my family as well, but at the same time, I was the one sort of charged with trying to figure this out. Well, you can't look in a book and find out what to do. And then when you start to look at the finances of it and how costly it becomes, not just to them, but to you, uh, I think this credit for uh, for caring bill is, is will really help a lot, ease the burden in a very slight way, but very, very helpful way. Because you're not only addressing these issues from the monetary and the economic way. It's the emotional energy that you expend every single day to make sure you're doing the right thing. And so um, being able to, um, to help uh, in the best way possible with, with this tax credit, I think, is, is an excellent idea. 
Um, I'm also on the Assisting Caregivers Today Caucus, Active Caucus, because again, of the passion that I have individually from my own experience, but what I hear every single day across the beautiful state of West Virginia. So with that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mike Carey, the congressman from Ohio. Thank you, Senator. Um, it's an honor to be before all of you today to announce this bipartisan bicameral legislation. I want to thank my colleague, Linda Sanchez um, from California. You know, I have the opportunity to serve with the representative on the Ways and Means Committee. And we've got to know each other. And I'll tell you, there's no tireless worker uh, than, uh, than the representative. But I can tell you, there are times I wish she wasn't so good at her job. <laughs> But I'd also like to thank my dear friend uh, and somebody that I've gotten to know, I won't say for how long, but uh, Senator, Senator Capito, she just is a true hero to the state of West Virginia and glad to be partnering with her and, and, and Senator Bennett, I think you really hit home on most of the points. <clears throat> you know, every year more than 48 million Americans serve as caregivers to our, love, uh, to our loved ones. And in Ohio, as big as our state is, that's about 1.4 million individuals. Now, We've all had our personal stories, and I saw this firsthand as my mother had to take care of my, my stepfather almost a decade ago. Now listen, to, whether it's changing the bed sheets to dressing the wounds to whatever the case may be, it is a responsibility, and it comes at a cost. However, roughly 78% roughly of the family caregivers say that they face out-of-pocket expenses, and all of you behind me know that it's probably a lot higher than that. So I would also say that AARP, and I appreciate them putting, help putting this on today, did their study that said that 26% 20 per, of income on caregivers' expenses come, from, uh, come out of their pockets. That adds up to about $600 billion a year. So in a time when you see Congress, many ways, not being bipartisan, this is what I hope, and I hope all the reporters will show this, that a Democrat from California, a Republican from Ohio, a Democrat from Colorado and a Republican from West Virginia can work together. It's not just our way or the highway, it is the American way. And I look forward to working with my colleagues and I urge my colleagues in both chambers to pass this legislation. Now I'd like to represent my dear friend from California. Well, good afternoon everybody and I'm in very august company with both senators and with my colleague from the Ways and Means Committee. Um, I want to thank everybody here for joining us um, to talk about something that's really important, and that is supporting family caregivers. And I want to give a shout out to my California caregivers who are here today as well. Um, everybody talked about sort of their personal story, and um, I have one too. Uh, both of my parents suffered from Alzheimer's. My father passed several years ago after dealing with it for almost 15 years. Um, my mother currently suffers with the disease. And I'm one of the fortunate ones, I will say. I come from a family of seven children. And so when you divide up the caregiving responsibilities and the financial out-of-pocket costs, it's more manageable than if you're an only child or if you're living in a different state from your parents. Um, and I was providing that care while also raising my own family. Um, so I understand firsthand how difficult that caregiving can really be. But caregivers are really the unsung heroes in this country. They step up every day to take care of their loved ones, and their loved ones need it the most. And so um, it's important to realize that this is an issue, as, as others have said, that is going to impact every family, whether it's you that will need care in the future or whether you are dealing with um, family members who need that care. Currently, about 50 million people in the United States serve as caregivers. And right now, too many of those family caregivers really lack the critical support that they need to do that work. Um, and that's why I'm focused on legislation that would give caregivers um, across the country um, a little bit of breathing room. Um, as I'm sure many of you know today, caregivers make sacrifices day after day, and sometimes for years after years. And sadly, some of those families find themselves um, slipping into poverty trying to provide the care for the loved one, their loved ones. And that's why the legislation, the Credit for Caring Act, is so crucial that we can help alleviate just a little bit of that burden. 
Um, so I'm going to talk about California for a minute. In California alone, there are almost 4.5 million family caregivers who provide $81 billion in unpaid care annually. Um, so that's folks that may even have to leave the workforce to stay home to care for their loved ones. And this legislation would provide a little boost for family members who are doing that unpaid work every day so that they can focus on what really matters most, which is caring for their loved ones. I'm exceedingly um, uh, just proud that AARP has endorsed this legislation. They support it and endorse it. And I'm proud to work with my colleagues in the House and the Senate um, to try to give caregivers across the United States um, this help that they really need. Um, so I just want to close by saying thank you to all the caregivers that have joined us today. We know that your work is tough, but it's uh, really, truly a labor of love, um, and you deserve the support that we are trying to provide to you. And now it's my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce uh, Nancy Lamont from AARP. Nancy. Thank you. Thanks, Congresswoman, and thanks, everybody, for being here. Uh, and especially thank you, Senator Capito, uh, Congressman uh, Kerry, uh, Congresswoman Sanchez, and uh, uh, Senator Bennett for your commitment to introducing this legislation and seeing it to the end. Um, and I want to thank all of our caregivers who are here today. Many of them are probably in the audience, but some of them are behind me. They've been referenced already. Melissa Axel from California, who's here with her husband, James Jacoby. Uh, Linda Philippeck from uh, Colorado. I'm standing right in front of you. Uh, uh, Barry uh, Rayfield from Ohio. I'm blocking you as well. Sorry about that. And you've already heard reference to Monty Brown from West Virginia, and you'll hear from him in a minute. Um, each of them, each of you, uh, has a unique story and experience caring for your loved ones. And we, uh, we deeply appreciate that you all took the time uh, to come here today and stand on behalf of 48 million family caregivers across this country. This is an important piece of legislation that can make a real difference in the lives of those millions of Americans who are helping care for parents, spouses, and other loved ones. Uh, you've heard a lot of statistics. I'll go through them very quickly. More than one in five adults in the country are unpaid family caregivers, doing everything from preparing meals and driving to doctor's appointments to handling complex medical and nursing needs. And something else that most of them are doing, as we've heard reference to, is paying for care expenses out of their own pockets. On average, a little more than $7,200 each year. And while we know that 60% of caregivers are in the paid workforce, recent AARP research shows that a significant number are adjusting their work schedules, switching from full to part-time, taking a leave of absence, or giving up their jobs entirely to accommodate caregiving responsibilities. And honestly, I was stunned when I saw some numbers last weekend in just one state where we were doing polling we found that close to three quarters of women caregivers changed their work schedule. More than a quarter took a temporary leave and almost a quarter went from full to part-time and 20% stopped working entirely. This is creating a tremendous financial strain on families and folks who, through their unpaid efforts, are holding up our long-term care system and playing a critical role in the delivery of health care every single day. Credit for caring would help take care of some of the financial pressure that these people face, and we are going to continue to fight for these and other policies to help caregivers. We look forward to working with Senator Bennett, Senator Capito, Congresswoman Sanchez, Congressman Kerry, and others to get this over the finish line. And as I say every day to our team at AARP, many of whom are here, uh, you will have the full faith and credit of AARP working to push this and to have it enacted into law. And with that, I want to turn the podium over to Monty Brown. Senators, members of Congress, AARP, thank you for this wonderful legislation and for the opportunity to come here and let you all see some of the faces that are associated with it. My name is Monty Brown. I'm from the great state of West Virginia. And in 15 years of practicing law and 25 years of ordained ministry, 
I had an opportunity to and did do a lot of great stuff, but nothing that I ever did was more important or exhausting than the 13 years in which I provided end-of-life care for my mother-in-law, my mother, my wife, and then later on, a lady who came along who promised me that she would not die before me and then got ovarian cancer. They all suffered from different diseases, but they had some things in common. They hurt physically. They did not want to be a burden. And so when expenses came up for respiratory, pulmonary, ambulatory, comfort needs, the last thing I was going to do would be complain. They were going through enough already, and so you find the money for it, whether it's cutting back on expenses or borrowing from your pension or taking out of your savings. You do what you need to do just because. And eventually, all four of them ended up succumbing to what the doctors won't put the name on, but which I've come to call O-D-T-A-A, one darn thing after another. (laughs) And my wife's four heart attacks and pulmonary hypertension and stroke and non-alcohol-related cirrhosis of the liver and renal failure finally all came crashing in. But once time has passed, you know, you did the very best that you could for them, and that makes it all worthwhile. So I'm grateful for this legislation in which people can get on board in a nonpartisan way. I just added up. Two of my ladies were Republicans and two of them were Democrats. <laughs> I am so grateful for the work that you all are starting and are going to finish out so that we who love our family members can take care of them. And we'll do it regardless of price. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Let's get a group. Let's get a group. Let's do it. Good. Let's get a group photo. We've got the spread out. I'll get over here with. Yes. In front of the. In front of the. Oh, in front of the. Oh, in front of the.